Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> Friends, as you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is giving daily enjoyment to millions of people all over America, in offices and factories, on farms and branches, in mines and oil fields. Folks find that chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps them feel better and work better. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad that their product is proving helpful and enjoyable to so many people, and they're glad, too, that they're able to bring you life with Luigi, because they know it's the kind of a radio program that millions of Americans enjoy. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in it. Dear Mama me. <laughs> Almost everything I'm a do, I'm a do like the American, Mama me, except in a business. Everywhere the things that they good, the people are buying the bonds, everybody's a work, and the business is a better than ever, is a prosperity all over. Then you look into my cash register and you see big depression. <laughs> yeah, Mamma Mia, with everybody, business is a turnover. With me, it's a lay down like a rock. <laughs> but worst of all, Mamma Mia, I'm, I'm all plenty rent to my landlord, Pasquale. And now he's making fun of me. He's, he's sending me bills in little poems. This morning he's sending me one is read, Dear Luigi. Your rent is a do, you ain't a got till till 1952. <laughs> and then this afternoon he's a send another one. If you don't pay your rent, and I'm a no can buy wine, I'm going to send you back on a slow boat to China. <laughs> I remember before he used to say to me, It's all right, Luigi, take your time. And I'm a took, but now I'm a getting afraid. I think I better go in his store and have a little talk with him. Rosa! 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 You can't be Papa! <laughs> yes, Rosa. Did Luigi? Oh, put down that ice cream cone. You always want to weigh 250 pounds. Oh, Papa, I don't weigh 250 pounds anymore. You don't? That's so wonderful. How much you weigh now? 256. <laughs> the one always with that ice cream in the hot weather. Oh, don't worry, Papa. It don't show on me. Nothing will show on you except maybe another head. <laughs> I said put down that ice cream. But, Papa, it ain't that thing. It ain't the skinnying, either. <laughs> Look, did Luigi come in the store today to ask about his rent? No. Ah, thought by this time he'd be busted in here with that little pop squeak of voice hollering, Pasquale, give me one more chance. Hey, Pasquale, give me one more chance, sir. <laughs> hey, what's the matter? Why, why are you looking at me like this? <laughs> you keep quiet. <laughs> Well, what's on your mind, little banana nose? Well, uh, well uh, Pasquale, these are letters, these, these, these are poems that you sent to me. Oh, you mean about the rent for May? Uh-huh. And before that, April, and don't forget a March. And a February and a January. <laughs> There's the one thing about you, Luigi, you're very prompt. It comes the first of every month, you don't pay on the time. <laughs> Yeah, but Pasquale, you forget I, I, I paid you last December. Yeah, I remember. I was a fine a Christmas a present, a one month rent. Luigi, let's face it. Are you no businessman? I'm never going to get him my rent, and i got to do something to drastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't do that, Pasquale. Please, uh, have a little patience. I'm, I'm going to pay you. With the what? The Marshall Plan helps out of countries and not cabbage pussies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> well, 
Luigi, now that we are alone. Here, but Pasquale, please, if you got any ideas, I'm going to promise you I'm going to do everything I can to sell them more antiques. Oh, stop with that talk. What are you going to do, call up a Paul Revere, ask him if he wants to buy back his horse? <laughs> I've been thinking, Luigi, this ain't the neighborhood for antiques. Lots of people are past that store every day, see? So I've got a way for you to pay off your rent and still keep you next door in case you ever change your mind about a Rosa. Well, Pasquale, what, what's the your idea? I'm going to rent out the front half of your antique shop. You got, you're going to rent out the front half of the antique shop? Yes, yeah, just for the summer. Yeah, but what are they going to sell it there? Hot dogs. <laughs> Hot dogs? Oh, no, 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 Pasquale, you're joking. Yeah, then why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm just going to knock out the front half and set up an open counter for the pass in the trade. Mamma mia. What are you so afraid of? It's a good thing I'm doing this. A good thing? Sure. I'm... Thomas and Jefferson and the others, if they die and they get in the back of the store, they're getting too much of a sunburn in your window. And believe me, when Washington and the other fellas in the boat get a smell of them hot dogs, they're going to knock off a road and go to lunch. <laughs> no, no, Pasquale, you can't talk like this. You can't, you can't do this to me. Oh, no? Hey, Jerry, Jerry, will you stop your dinner a minute to come over here? Hot the dogs in an antique shop. You call me Pasquale? Hey, yeah, Jerry, I meet the Luigi, a fellow who's going to be selling antiques in back of your hot dog store this is summer. Oh, hi, Luigi. Hi. Hey, we're going to make a great combination, kid. You with the antiques and me with a 20-year-old mustard. Ha, 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 ha. Eat it and beat it. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Eat it and beat it up. No, 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 Pasquale. Nobody's going to buy my antiques from a hot dog store. Oh, now don't say that, Luigi. Maybe we can work together, partner. With every hot dog, we give away free one spinning wheel. <laughs> There you are. Get your red hot hot dogs. Nice hot hot dogs. Just like Betsy Ross used to make. No, 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 no. I'm not the you pattern and you crazy. Hey, what's eating you? You hot the dogs. That's the what kind of go by. <laughs> Listen, I just was making mock balls. Uh, uh, quiet, please. Settle down, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Horowitz? Here. Yeah. Mr. Olson? Yeah. yeah. Mr. Schultz? Columbus, 1492, the Pilgrim, 1620, uh, Revolutionary War, 1789. Uh, Mr. Schultz? No, don't stop me, Miss Spalding. I want to give you all the right answers before I forget them. <laughs> <laughs> smile, everybody. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, I don't know why you quoted those dates. Today's lesson was in English, not in history. Himmel. Today I got smart for nothing. <laughs> well, let's get on. I assigned you the lesson on punctuation marks. Uh, yes, Mr. Basco? Is your hand raised? Yes, Miss Spalding. Uh, Miss Spalding, you think it's right to sell hot dogs in antique shops? <laughs> well, Mr. Basco, whatever it is, please save your personal problems till after class. Right. Now, gentlemen, getting back to our English lesson, who can tell us the difference between a comma and a semicolon? Mr. Horowitz? Well... A comma is like a little fish hook, and a semicolon is like a little fish hook with a boim on top. <laughs> well, I'll accept that. Good. Olsen, bring the tackle and we'll all go fishing. <laughs> oh, please. Now, tell us about the uses of the comma and semicolon. Suppose you give us an example to illustrate. With pleasure. John, Henry, Jack, and Joe went to the movies. And where are the commas? Between John and Henry, and Henry and Jack, and Jack and Joe. Oh, is he splitting up that family? <laughs> well, uh, no, not, uh, not quite, Mr. Horowitz. Mr. Schultz, what would you put between Jack and Joe? In the movies? <laughs> Two pretty girls. <laughs> no, no. A bag of popcorn? <laughs> no, no. Mr. Basco, what do you think? Well, I'm... I'm thinking the movies would be all right, the hot dogs, but they're never in an antique shop. Heavens, <laughs> Mr. Basco, can't you get your mind on your work? No, Miss Pauling, it's impossible to get my mind on the work because, because I'm starting to think of what Pasquale wants to do. That's the worst thing can happen to me. Well, Luigi, why do you stand for it? Because, Horowitz, I, I, I don't know what to do. Well, now, sometimes a misfortune can be a blessing in disguise. <laughs> now, if Pasquale goes through with this plan... It just might help your future. 
क्या बात है How is it going to help in my future, husband? Well, uh, Luigi, you might be fortunate and find a, a more suitable store. You know, there's something to that, Mr. Basco. Yeah, but I'm even a kind of pet answer for this one. Aha! You just hit the nail on the head. You think my body would ever stand on someone else, but it stands on you? That's right. You'll always keep your arms so long as there's a chance you'll marry his daughter. He's just putting the squeeze on you again with roast. Yeah, and that thumb squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, Luigi, don't worry. Just go back and tell him. Pasquale, pick between me and the hot dogs. About a first, you baby, you better fatten up a little. He'll pick and you'll still look like a hot dog. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> you, you, you really have nothing to lose, Luigi. Positive, you'll have to back down. I would think so, Mr. Basco. Just be firm. All right, just, just to be firm, huh? All right, I'm going to tell him. Hey, but a friend, what if Pasquale says, you go, Luigi, and the hot dogs you stay, then what? Ach, that's impossible, Luigi. As long as Pasquale has got a fat dog, and as long as you are single, not one hot dog is going to snuggle in a bun this summer. <laughs> Pasquale, uh, right now, Pasquale, quick, you got to choose between me and the hot dogs. That's easy, I pick the hot dogs. <laughs> well, I'm going to talk to you with it because... Huh? Pasquale, you, you said it, the hot dogs. I didn't say ex Xavier Cougats. <laughs> Pasquale, you better listen to me because I'm not making no joke. If you want to sell the hot dogs in the antique shop, I'm packing up and a living. I'm a living to you and a rush. Goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye. Yes, a wonderful goodbye for me and a wonderful Rosa. <laughs> now goodbye, I said it for both of us if together, goodbye. Pasquale, I'm not going to say goodbye to you. Too bad. I'm not even going to say good. <laughs> I don't care if you don't even say good. <laughs> I, 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 I know you don't mean it, so I'm going to give you another chance. Thanks very much. Goodbye. All right. One more chance. Oh, stop a stab of that begging like a slot machine. <laughs> Goodbye, good riddance, and don't ever bother me again. I'm a wonder if he means it. To. <laughs> return to life with Luigi, I'd like to mention the extra enjoyment Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum can give you now that the weather is getting warmer. When you're active out in the sun or working hard indoors, there are times when your mouth and throat get dry. Well, just slip a stick of refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum into your mouth, start in chewing, and see what a difference it makes. That lively, full-bodied spearmint flavor cools your mouth right away. And the pleasant chewing helps keep your throat moist and refreshed. Yes, chewing a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum really gives you a little lift and helps you keep going at your best. It sweetens your breath, too. So keep a package of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy all the time. It's a refreshing treat that's easy to carry with you and enjoy at any time. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Vasco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, I'm going to find out soon enough that Pasquale is really mean it. He wants I'm going to get out, so he's, he's going to open up a hot dog place here. He's going to put a note under my door this morning, and there was another Pasquale form, and he said, if you ain't out by half past three, I'm going to spray the place with a DDT. <laughs> Mama me is, is there nothing left for me to do, so I'm going so to pack up all of my clothes. I'm going to take everything from all the shelves. I'm going to put everything out of all of the places I'm going to get. I'll put everything else I'm on in the world. 
And this is a take of me five minutes. <laughs> but what am I going now? What am I going to do? I'm going to know. Oh, wait, the mamma mia, is there somebody coming in? Luigi, my fellow boobler. Tell me, what happened? Your face looks so white. What did you get? A moonbird? <laughs> no, no, sure, sir. The spell is a pick the hot dogs and I'm going to go. Ach, well, schmal, Luigi. Like we say in the delicatessen business, every knock is a verse. <laughs> Yeah, but for me, it's too bad to show you because when I'm going to walk out of the store, what am I going to do? Ah, where, 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 where am I going to How am I going to make my living? Well, it is tough with you, Luigi. You are too old for the army and you're too young for social security. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Luigi, it's, it's, it's partly my fault, Father Captain, so I give you the wrong advice. I'm going to help you get a job. A job? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to remember... What's happening when I'm a took that a job in a factory? Yeah, yeah. The 12 o'clock whistle blew and you yelled out, everybody should hide at the air raid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then the time I'm working at a gas station and somebody's asking for apple and I'm a says that she's a no worker here. <laughs> That's no good either because, Schultz, I'm on a good forensic shop. For anything else, I'm got a two left hand. Two left hand? Him, well, you'd make a wonderful first baseman for the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> ah, smile, Luigi. Don't give up. We're going to look in the newspapers and find them. All right, sure, sir. I'm a hopper, sir. Ah, here's something right here. Oh? Wanted, wanted. Seventy-five dollars to start. Oh. Pleasant working conditions. Uh -huh. This big executive in his work. Oh, that's, that's, that's a good issue. Yeah, sure. Oh, no, wait. Here's a catch. Oh. You've got to be a young, attractive girl. <laughs> Look under the mail section. All right. Uh, yeah, well, I'm going to call off some jobs, Luigi, and you stop me when it sounds in the house. Right. Yeah, well, uh, mill machinist, uh, drill press operator, tool grinder, uh, hydraulic installer, chick and fixture builder, uh, metal fitter, punch press operator. <laughs> Ach, Luigi, why couldn't you be a young, attractive girl? <laughs> I don't know, but... No, no, wait, 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 wait. Here's something. Soda shirt, wonderful ice cream parlor. No experience necessary. That's it, Luigi. You're a soda shirt. Yeah, but I sure some never saw the jacket in my life. Luigi, shirking soda starts only the beginning. With yeah. your business sense, I see great things for oh, well, you. But the what is shirt? Well, you know how drugstores took in soda fountains. Yeah. After you own your own soda fountain, yeah. you can take in a line of toothbrushes. And then you'll have a drugstore. Yeah, but it should. Put the brush in the yeah. But it should. You think that it could happen? Why not, Luigi? Who's brushes and ice cream? You'll make a fortune. <laughs> hey, well, how wonderful. People will brush their teeth with ammoniated pistachio. <laughs> 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 you, you're going to be so rich. You're going to be so rich, you're going to spend your winters in a fine hotel in Las Vegas. And your summers in that same hotel. Huh? Your springs in that same hotel. And then what should someone ever going to travel? Oh, sure, you're going to travel. You're going to be so rich, you can take that hotel along with you. Oh. Just smile, Luigi. Sure, everything is going to turn out fine. Oh, Schultze. Schultze, thank you. You know, this is so wonderful to be like you, Schultze. You always a hat. Well, that's my motto, Luigi. <laughs> yeah, I'd walk a mile for a smile. <laughs> <laughs> now, you go get this ice cream shop, and Luigi, remember, he like me, huh? Like always you. happy, yeah. always laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you! <laughs> my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> Oh, yes, Sonny. Uh, oh, you want a nice ice cream corner, maybe, huh? Give me a chocolate sundae. Uh, all right. You come back in a five days. Today's only two. <laughs> I want a chocolate sundae. Today, not Sunday. Please, little boy. You mix me all up, please. Oh, what's the trouble, Basco? Well, it, well, it was, you see, he's only a little boy, and, and he don't understand a good English yet. I want a chocolate sundae with chocolate syrup. Oh, right, kid. One black bottom. <laughs> one, one of what? Black bottom. Sure. That's a chocolate sundae. 
Mamma mia, it's a wonder dictionary. I'm a forgot to buy a sort of dictionary. <laughs> uh, don't worry, Vasco. You'll catch on fast. Just call those orders into Charlie nice and loud. Uh, here's some of the lingo. Lingo? Uh, what, what's that to me? Uh, now, look. If somebody orders a soda, you say fizz water. Well, what's the matter with a soda? Somebody's got something against that the word? No, no. Just how we say it. If somebody wants an ice cream cone with two scoops, that's a double-decker black stick. Artificial flavor and bug juice, root beer's called 55. Chocolate ice cream's chock, vanilla's van, four scoops of ice cream's four in a bowl. Any questions? Well, yeah, about a two dozen. <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia, English and languages will go crazy when you put in some ice cream. <laughs> Yes, sir. Coming up, sir. Vasco, keep it up. You're doing fine. Think of nothing of it, bud. Now, you, what are you going to have? Uh, how's about a chocolate soda? Please? Oh, sure. One a bucket of juice of brown up in a sack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm the beer, Monsieur. I'm the beer. What are you, a soda jerk or a radar specialist? <laughs> no, 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 sure. So you got to get the hep. That's the lingo. A glass of milk, please. Uh, what's it, that? Glass of milk. All right, sir. Where's the cow? <laughs> Smaller glass of butter? No, large. Rich is at the cow. <laughs> Himmels, that's talk. Even I'm for shimmers. <laughs> well, well, tell me, Luigi, I give Pasquale the address of this place. Was he down here yet? No, 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 no sure. I'm, I'm expecting him, but he's not come. Mm-hmm. Hey, look, here he comes now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, now put it on a big act, act very independent. Independent, no, no, yeah, sure. uh, Pardon me, it's very hot outside. I'm liking some refreshing. Oh, of course, yes, sir. Hmm. Come closer, my boy. You look like somebody I know. Pumpkin seed eyes, if they remind me of somebody, but the melon head is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Jack, I'm busy. What is it? Hmm, look who's getting up in the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so give me a chocolate and all of the milk. Okay. One the black and the white. <laughs> put some eggs in. Break it and shake it. <laughs> What's this to break? Come on, Luigi. I know you. What's this to double it off? Well, well, you thought I wouldn't be good for nothing else, so you threw me out. What are you all wrong? I'm going to wait on a similar customer. Yes, sir? Is there something for you and you got I have a banana split. Want a house about that? <laughs> and are you pleasing? Oh, I'll have uh, three flavors of ice cream with nuts, uh, crushed fruit, whipped cream, and plenty of nice red cherries. Had a call. Well, Pascal, how you like it the way I'm working out of here? Huh? So you think you're rubbing it in me, huh? Well, Luigi, just a few information. I had the contract to make up a plans and he's starting to build the next week. What do you... Are you, you going to throw with everything? That's all right. It's a free country. I'm not going to stop you from taking this job. But it's also a free country, and I'm going to change it the antique shop to a hot dog stand. Goodbye. Here's the money. You can eat in my malt and the milk. I hope you eat so many you get a fat and a bust. I heard everything, Luigi. Oh, how you got that spaghetti salesman mad. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 uh, so what's the use? He's never going to let me back in now. Ah, the what? You got it a good job. Yeah. Ah, you little Wiener schnitzel. Your heart ain't really... <laughs> ain't really with the bug juice in the houseboats, huh? No, 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 sure. Well, all right, Luigi. I got one more idea in my head. Pasquale gave it to me when he said you should eat till you bust. So you mean you, you, you want I should have bust No, no, no. But I know a certain other party who will. And Luigi, smile. I guarantee you're going to get back your antique shop or my name ain't Shay. I mean Schultz. <laughs> ah, you got me talking like a jerk now. <laughs> I'll have a glass of Mission Orange. All right, yes, sir. Where's the Capistrano? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Double the Talk. Oh, oh Pascal, you're back again. That's the third time this week. 
You want to kick me out? Why, why do you keep coming him back? Luigi, for myself, I'm happy to get rid of you, and I got the contract to start this afternoon. Oh, contract? What? This afternoon? Uh, excuse me. Pasco, make up another three houseboats for that party in the booth back there. Hmm? Okay, boss. Hmm. Not a trip, but i How do you say, Luigi, with a Ross, it's a different. She don't stay around the store anymore. She goes away for long afternoons. And with all the worrying, she's already gained the ten pounds in one week. Oh, that's just too bad. Uh, Basco, that party said as soon as you're through with the three houseboats, get some morons for lights ready. Mamma mia, how that the party can eat? Luigi, what kind of a customer you got here? Every time I come in, they eat like a pair of horses. Who can afford so much? Yeah, but but that's their privilege, Pascali. And a, a customer, did you say morons is the light? That's right. <laughs> but first, if we don't shake. Rosa, I see you that's eating like a pair of pigs. <laughs> Not from sadness, but from sodas. So where you get all the money to buy? Luigi promised he's going to pay for all the ice cream I can eat. No, no, Luigi. If she keeps this up, she's going to weigh 400 pounds or so. She's going to bust. Well, so what? For her, is it going to be happy explosion? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Rosa. Here's your three milk shakes. This is a free country. Nobody can stop you. Oh, Listen, stop that. I do anything. I take you back, but stop that. Oh, no, 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 Pascal. I'm, I'm making a good money here. Luigi, money ain't everything. Well, if money ain't everything, are you throwing me out there? And why are you throwing me out there and putting it in a hot dog stand? Oh, don't listen to me. I'm a big liar. <laughs> well, then, Pascal, you, you forget the hot dog stand and take me back in? Anything, anything, Luigi. Please come back. Well, uh, I don't all right, Pascal. <laughs> Welcome home, my son. <laughs> Is it good to come home, Pastor? Hey, how about a chocolate molar milk with an egg? All right, uh, chocolate mother with egg. Chocolate mother milk with one egg. What? You heard me, boss. A chocolate mother milk with one egg. I'm a tired of you double the talk, and I'm a quitting the goodbye. <laughs> Well, Mamma Mia, I'm, I'm back in my antique shop, and there's going to be no hot dogs to sold here this summer, and everybody's a happy. Especially Rosa. Ten pounds are happier. Well, Mamma Mia, I'm, I'm learning the whole lot in that ice cream parlor. Whole different language is called the lingo. And when I'm come back to Pasquale's story, he's, he's the one to learn it too. So he's a said to me. Hey, Luigi, if you was a still working there and that order for chocolate and malted milk with an egg to come in, how would you say it? Chocolate and malted milk with one egg? Uh-huh. Well, Pascal, is it like this? Sir? One of milk, a twist of the chocolate, and a make of the cackle. <laughs> <laughs> so good night, the mamma mia. Sleep for good. You know, I'm always a thinking of you. Your loving a son, a Luigi Bass, the little M. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is good to enjoy whether you're indoors or out, working, playing, or just relaxing. The refreshing flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth and sweetens your breath. Besides, the chewing action helps cleanse your teeth and helps keep them looking bright and attractive. So for a daily treat that's good for you and gives you flavor enjoyment plus chewing enjoyment, get a few packages of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum. It costs so little you can enjoy it often every day. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Vasco writes another letter to his mama Vasco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Norman McDonald. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash has starred as Luigi Vasco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Paulding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Oak. Music is directed by Lud Gluck. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.